The ink is not even dry on the 2024 elections, just days behind us now. But the resistance is in full swing as Democrats vacillate about whom to blame for the Trump red tsunami that obliterated them on November 7th, 2024. At the moment, it's a toss up on whether to blame creepy Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or the voters who apparently are just too stupid to understand the Democrats' communication strategy. While the shrews at the dystopian view on ABC remain stuck on stupid, the resistance is busy gearing up for treason, tossing their toys out of the pram in a national leftist temper tantrum because they did not get their way. Now, not only did they not get their way, but Trump utterly obliterated them. The fake media and pollsters lied about the youth gap, the gender gap, and so much more in the lead up to November 5th. Meanwhile, Trump gathered a huge tent of gays, Christians, Michigan Muslims, Jews, Hispanics, black men, and so many other groups. In 2024, Trump is the one who represents working class America, not the Democrats. And they just can't come to grips with that. They think there's something they're not, a party that cares about the little guy. As they strut down the street in their Jimmy Choo's or Christian Louboutins, sipping on their lattes, headed back to their million dollar suburban homes, staring down their noses at the unclean, ignorant masses, translated that, that means you and me, they seem incapable of grasping reality. While Biden, strangely, suddenly says it's all going to be all right, Trump is no threat. Kamala promises to work with the transition team though a memo from her staff reportedly indicates that they'll do all they can to Trump-proof America before January 20th. And the leftist misfits are well down the road with their anti-democratic plans. Strange, they claim that Trump was the threat to democracy, but it was the Democratic Party that stole the nomination from 14.5 million Democrat Party voters in primaries across the United States. And now their state-level leaders are plotting insurrection at every turn. Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey is preparing to fight Donald Trump on one of his cornerstone campaign promises when he takes office in January. It's been reported today that Massachusetts State Police won't take part in Trump's mass deportation plan, according to the governor. She held a news conference to tell folks that she is going to put in place protections against the new administration. <laughs> Seriously? She addressed the red herring of this year's election, abortion rights. There's no such thing as a right to an abortion. It's a privilege. And it's not in jeopardy. And she says, in case there's a federal ban put in place. But it's impossible for a federal ban to be put in place. First off, the only action the president can take is an executive order. That doesn't apply to the country, but only to the executive branch of government. Despite efforts by Trump and past presidents, including Biden, who is the worst, at using executive orders to do what they want in an authoritarian fashion, it doesn't apply. So it would be struck down by the courts instantaneously. And if a law was put before the president by the House and Senate, he signed it into law banning abortion or restricting it, it would be struck down by the courts because it's unconstitutional. The Dobbs decision has made it quite clear that the 10th Amendment to the Constitution prevents the federal government from regulating abortion, of course, with the exception of federally run organizations like VA hospitals and military hospitals. Now, she says she's going to put stuff in place to stop this. That's something we're very committed to, and we'll make sure that women and those who need care are protected here in Massachusetts. Murdering children is not care. Care would be contraception. She says always, always. She noted the state still has a stockpile of mifeprestazone. That's an abortion drug. Yeah, okay. She said whether you're feeling a lot of feelings today and maybe scared of feeling vulnerable, know that we see you and we're going to work together. But you're not going to work together with the federal government, whom you have an obligation to be responsive to. Meanwhile, New York Attorney General Letitia James is prepared to fight back against Trump. California Governor Gavin Newsom calls special session to protect liberal policies from Trump presidency. A special session of the state legislature, seriously. Folks, in reality, these pathetic Democrats are less about insurrection and more about jockeying for poll position for 2028 as a defeated, demoralized, destroyed Democrat party is bereft of leaders. Gruesome, Gabby Newsom, Gretchen Whitless, little Josh Shapiro. Talk about desperate for someone, anyone, to lead them back from the abyss. But the Democrats are in a pit of their own making. They alienated America, not Trump. And we, the rational American voters, made them pay dearly for dividing and betraying America. And as if that's not enough, as many as 50,000 protesters are going to march in D.C. for the People's March on January 18th, yet another misanthropic effort to undermine the incoming administration. Kind of like Madonna threatening to blow up the White House back in 2017, remember that? 
50,000 going to march to protest a Democratic election. Democrats call Trump anti-Democrat, a threat to democracy. Yet they're the ones who can't live with the results of a Democratic election in which Donald Trump won a clear majority of the vote and the Electoral College. Who's the threat to democracy? Who are the anti-Democrats? Sounds to me like it's a Democrat party and its voters. Still, nearly half of those who bothered to vote were able to pull a lever for the dumbest box of rocks to ever get elected to any office, let alone as vice president. That alone means that we have a long way to go to save this country. Good luck, Donald Trump.